Hi, I'm Larry Black, and today we're looking back. About 20 years ago, I had an idea to get a room filled with country music people, singers, songwriters, put together 30 of them. They love to tell stories. They love to share with each other. And today, they get to share with you. This is Looking Back with Larry Black. Welcome back to Looking Back. George Hamilton IV had a son. He was George Hamilton V. George Hamilton V had a son. He's George Hamilton VI. And I understand there's a seventh on the way. But our point in having George Hamilton IV with us is that he is a great storyteller. Listen to this story, which is true, about the hymn writer. There once um, was a young man whose mother died when he was only six years old. She was a good Christian mother, took him to Sunday school and church. She didn't send him. She went with him, taught him about Jesus. But she went home to be with the Lord when he was just six. His daddy was a sea captain, so there wasn't anybody around to look after him. He only got to go to school for about three years, and then at the age of 11, they sent him off to sea on his father's sailing ship. You've heard that old saying, he could cuss like a sailor. I don't guess all sailors necessarily cuss, but this one learned to cuss pretty good by the time he was 12. By the time he was 13, he could take a drink with the big boys. While still in his teens, he became an alcoholic, a blasphemer. His early life was one of immorality and failure after failure after failure. He was a bad kid. Got in so much trouble with his father that his daddy disowned him, kicked him off the ship, and he went to work on slave ships taking slaves from the coast of Africa to Charleston Harbor, South Carolina, to trade for cotton to take back to the port of Liverpool for the cotton mills of Lancashire to make nice clean white shirts for English people to wear to church on Sunday morning. We were all in it together in those days. It's easy to point the finger, but those, tra those slaves were traded for cotton and rice and goods for nice European folks. Anyway, he was a slave trader, and he got in so much trouble on the slave ship, they put him in the bottom of the boat cleaning up after the slaves. He was in a storm at sea. He had been reading a book called The Imitation of Christ by Sir Thomas Akempis, and something was bothering him. Something was coming back to him from those Sunday school days. Jesus loves me, this I know. What does the Bible says? Raise up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not turn from it. He was in this storm at sea and thought he was going to drown. He started praying. Well, wouldn't we all if we thought we were about to lose our life? But he meant it. He prayed for forgiveness and he prayed to be saved. And he was saved in more ways than one. He made it back to England. What do you suppose he did? Went back to school. And at the age of 39, after all that, what do you suppose he became? A preacher of the gospel. One of the greatest preachers that England has ever known. I went to see his grave one time in a little churchyard in a place called Olney, England. And uh, you might wonder, well, why would some hillbilly from the grand old uproar want to go to England and see some former slave trader's grave? Written on his gravestone there, it says, John Newton, clerk, once an infidel, a libertine, a servant of slaves in Africa, was by the rich mercy of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, preserved, restored, pardoned, and appointed to preach the faith he had long labored to destroy. Old John Newton preached some mighty sermons in his later years, and he also wrote some beautiful hymns, none any prettier than his own life story. He put his autobiography and his confession in a song. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. And then the next verse, which really tells old John Newton's story. It was grace that taught my heart to fear 
and grace my fears relieve how precious did that grace appear the hour I first believe and because of that amazing grace that old John Newton found out about rather late in life some of the rest of us late bloomers here this afternoon could sing the next verse together in blessed assurance. Won't you help me? What do you say? Here we go. When we've been there 10,000 years, bright shining as the sun. Amen. Amen. That's beautiful, George. Isn't that special? Now you know something about that song you didn't know before. Come back next week for more Looking Back. And remember to remember, don't forget to subscribe. <laughs>